Okay, so before uh, we've learned how to uh, streak a plate to get isolated colonies. Uh, we've learned how to inoculate broth cultures. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to learn how to do a quantitative spread plate. Uh, and what that means is that we're going we're gonna to learn how to dilute a bacterial culture um, and spread uh, the dilutions across auger so we get individual colonies. But this time we'll actually be able to count the individual colonies and use a little bit of math uh, to calculate how concentrated the bacteria were in the original culture. The way we're going to do that is by using these, uh, these test tubes. So these are called dilution blanks, uh, and each one of them contains 9.9 .9 milliliters of a sterile saline solution. So if I put 100 microliters of a bacterial culture into one of these, uh, then I'll have a 1 100th dilution of that original culture. So if there were a million bacteria per milliliter in the original culture, now there's just 10,000 bacteria per milliliter in this one. And by using more than one of these dilution blanks in sequence, uh, I can get even higher dilutions, right? So I can have a 100-fold dilution. I can dilute, dilute that one again to get a 10,000-fold dilution. I can dilute that one again to get a million-fold dilution, okay? So here's how we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to be working with um, this uh, E. coli culture uh, in a flask, and I'll show you how to do a quantitative spread plate. First thing, let's turn on our Bunsen burner. All right, so I have my, my dilution blanks here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the cap on each one of them. I'm gonna go ahead and flame the top of it. I'm just gonna set them up kind of in order that I'm gonna use them uh, in my rack here. All right, and you can label the tubes if you want to. I usually just have it set up where I know that the the dilutions are in order from, from back to front. Uh, you'll often be working with a lot of these at once, so it kind of saves a little bit of time not to actually label them uh, if you can get away with it. Okay, so I got my P100 pipetter set to 100 microliters. And I'm going to flame the lip of this flask. Get 100 microliters of bacteria. I'm just going to pipette that into my first dilution tube. All right, vortex it. All right, and now I'm gonna pipette 100 microliters from that tube into the next one. Vortex it carefully. And do the same thing for this third dilution one. Is easy. Okay, so now what we've got to do is we have to take each one of these dilutions and we're going to spread plate it uh, onto auger plates. Okay, so we don't know exactly what the concentration of, of this culture is, so we're going to plate uh, a number of different dilutions on different plates, uh, and what we're going to hope that we get is that one of those plates is going to have a countable number of colonies on it. Uh, it's going to have enough colonies that we can be, you know, statistically confident we're getting an accurate representation of the original culture. But it's going to have few enough colonies that we can actually count them. We don't have one colony growing on top of the other one. So usually we're talking about between 30 and 300 colonies on a plate. I'm going to go ahead and label each one of my plates with the dilution that I'm plating, right? So I have a 10 to the minus 2 dilution, or a 100-fold dilution, a 10 to the minus 4 dilution, uh, and a 10 to the minus 6 dilution. All right, we're just going to do the, the first two, and you'll get the idea, right? So I'm just going to be plating 100 microliters from each of those dilution tubes right onto the auger. Okay, so this is my minus 2 tube. Okay, so I'm pipetting 100 microliters. <laughs> On there. You can see over here I've got a little beaker of ethanol with this little triangle shape uh, gizmo in it. This little cell spreader. Uh, sometimes we call it a hockey stick. And what I do is I dip it in the ethanol and I'm just going to put it in the flame and burn the ethanol off. Okay? And that's going to kill any bacteria that happen to be on the spreader. Wait for about five or ten seconds uh, for the, the spreader to cool off. And then I'm just going to go on here and I'm just going to spread it around while 
slowly rotating the plate. Okay, just make sure that you get all the liquid kind of evenly spread in. And when I'm done, I'm going to put the spreader back into the ethanol. And I'll repeat with the next plate. Pipette. Pipette the uh, culture on there. Flame my cell spreader. Ten seconds. I'm going to spread the culture all across the auger, right? When I'm done with the last plate, I'm just going to go ahead and flame the cell spreader again just to get the last bacteria off. One thing to definitely make sure to do, safety-wise, is two things to keep in mind. One is we always want to keep our beaker of ethanol on the opposite side of our workspace than our Bunsen burner. Because ethanol, of course, is flammable. That's why we're using it. The other thing that you want to make sure that you don't do is you don't want to put a hot cell spreader, or even worse, a cell spreader that's actually on fire, uh, into your beaker of ethanol. But if you do, never fear. All you have to do is put another beaker on top of it. Uh, it'll starve the fire for oxygen. It'll go out really fast. Plus, ethanol flames, in the grand scheme of things, are not all that hot. All right, so we incubated the plate overnight, and this is what we've got. So you can see that there's a bunch of individual colonies. Unlike your street plates, we don't have quadrants. It's all colonies all around. Uh, so now what we've got to do is we've got to count them. So I'll show you how I do that. I need two things. I need a little clicker here. This is what's going to help me keep a tally of the counts. And I need a Sharpie. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to make a mark on a colony and click at the same time. And I'm just going to do that with all the colonies on the plate, marking each colony as I count it. You can get pretty fast with this over time. And of course, this is keeping me from counting any colonies twice. I need to turn it around here. Sometimes the colonies will be close together, so you have to kind of make a judgment call about what qualifies as two colonies, but it's usually pretty clear. All right, 108 colonies. So I'm just gonna write that number directly on the plate, right? And that way I can do a whole bunch of plates and then later on we can go back and uh, collect all the data uh, all at once. Okay, so now that we have a colony count, we can do some calculations to figure out what the concentration of bacteria was uh, in the original culture. So you'll recall that I counted 108 colonies, right? Keep up with our units on this, and it will make it easier. So we have a colony count. Now what we have to do is we have to figure out a dilution factor, okay? So I got that colony count on the very last DT that I did, dilution tube, right? So that was the, the third dilution tube. So the way that I calculate a dilution factor is I take into account each one of the dilutions that I did. I do some fractions, all right? So with each one of the dilutions, uh, the dilution tubes, I put 0.1 microliter, right, um, into a total volume of 10 milliliters, actually it's 0.1 milliliters, into a total volume of 10 milliliters, right? Remember it was 9.9 .9 milliliters in a dilution tube, and I put in 100 microliters, which is the same thing as 0.1 milliliter, um, into that tube for a total of 10 mils. So this is the first dilution tube. I'm just going to multiply that for each dilution that I did. I did three dilutions. All right? And I have to do one more uh, multiplication step to account for the amount of liquid that I actually put onto the auger plate. So after doing all these dilutions, I then put 100 microliters, or 0.1 milliliters, onto the plate. So I'm going to multiply one last time by 0.1 milliliters, okay? Now we're gonna go through all of this, and let's look at the, the, the units, right? So I have milliliters in the numerator and denominator in each one of these. Those all cancel out. 
And the only one that doesn't cancel out is the milliliters in the last one, right? So I sum all this up or, or work out all the multiplication here. And what I'm going to end up with is the value 10 to the minus 7th milliliters, okay? And what that means is that this is the equivalent of plating 10 to the minus 7th of a milliliter worth of the original bacterial culture on that plate, which of course would be impossible. It's an extremely small volume. Uh, but the way that we achieved it was by going through these successive dilution steps. All right, so we want a value in cells per milliliter or colonies or colony forming units per milliliter. So to get that, we just have to divide the colony count, 108, 108 colonies divided by 10 to the minus seventh milliliters. And that's going to give us 1.08 times 10 to the ninth CFUs or colony forming units per milliliter. And that's how you do a quantitative spread plate.